gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to all of you joining us through the live stream. I remember in grade school learning about ostriches. These strange birds lives on, live on the savanna in Africa. And they're strange for a number of reasons. To begin with, they can't fly. And then, as grown adults, they can weigh over 300 pounds. And they have long legs and can run at speeds in excess of 40 miles an hour. And they have long necks that hold their heads some nine feet above the ground. But one of the funniest things we learned about them is what they do when they're frightened. They bend down those necks and stick their head in a hole in the sand. This huge creature buries its eyes to hide from danger in the world. And from the bird's perspective, the world is safe from what it can no longer see. That's funny to us, because we know that even though the ostrich feels safe with its head in the hole, the danger outside that hole is still a reality. One of the things that makes something funny for us is that it contains an element of truth about ourselves. Take a human baby, for instance. At some point in their early life, all infants play the game of peekaboo. The game starts with the baby making eye contact with an older child or an adult. And then it pulls a corner of the blanket up over its eyes, and the other person disappears. And they lower the blanket, and the person reappears, and that's the game. Over and over again, the baby takes delight in making the other person appear and disappear. It's a delight to the baby because, from their perspective, they have control over the world. And it's funny to us because, from our perspective, we know the real world doesn't work that way. Perspective and reality are things that we wrestle with for our entire life. To young adults, the world is full of promise and possibilities. To old adults, the world is full of lessons learned and wisdom. And in between, well, the world can sometimes be a frightening place. On each step of our journey, we have only our perspective, that is, our view of the world, around which to frame reality. And there are as many different perspectives as there are people. Each of us has our own perspective, which has developed in a unique way as we've traveled the journey of life. The world looks different from a soldier on the winning side of a battle than it does for one on the losing side. It looks different for a daughter of luxury and for a son of poverty, or for the fruit of privilege and the inheritance of injustice. There are different perspectives even for male and female. And our perspectives are a factor in how we engage the world today, how we perceive opportunities for the future, and even how we judge the past. One person's hero can be another person's villain. 
Where then, amongst all these different perspectives, lies reality? Is your perspective just as valid as my perspective? Or could it be that each of us has our head buried in the sands of our own perspective? Well, the one thing that we all have in common is inherent goodness. No matter what life has thrown at us, no matter how corrupt our perspective may be, every person has within them goodness and a goodness that desires the truth. That desire may be appropriated by others around us, or it may be perverted by sin, but it remains the essence of our nature. We desire truth. And we somehow instinctively know that truth is bigger than ourselves, that it's something beyond our hole in the sand, it's reaching for that truth beyond ourselves that is the stuff of authentic heroes. We recognize goodness in those who sacrifice their lives that others may live. We recognize goodness in the founders of our country who envisioned a nation of inalienable rights and paid the price of liberty. And we recognize the goodness in all those who came after and struggle to this day to form a more perfect union. As we remember and celebrate the birth of our nation this weekend, we do well to consider for a moment the divine perspective. I think it's fair to say that from God's perspective, we all have our heads in the sand. He sees the burdens of poverty and wealth. He sees the burdens of injustice and privilege. He sees the burdens of ignorance and snobbery. He sees the burdens of passivity and passion. He sees the burdens of suffering and luxury. He sees the burdens of despair and happiness. He sees the burden of sin. None of us are without burdens. Yet God sees more than our shortcomings. He also sees the spark of goodness he planted within us within every one of us. And he sees our struggles to throw off those burdens that attempt to crush that goodness and smother our desire for truth. The whole of our lives and the destiny of all of humanity are open before him. And in response, he sends a savior to rescue us. Jesus, the fullness of truth, the incarnation of divine wisdom. Jesus tells us to take up his yoke, that is to learn from him and to follow his teaching. He teaches there is a higher power. We are imbued by our creator with a spark of goodness. The unfulfilled longing within our hearts is a desire for truth and that our destiny is eternal communion with that truth. There is a divine plan, and the kingdom of God is even now unfolding in our world. He invites us into what we can call a Christian perspective. We are loved by a God who sees the goodness in us, and that love can throw off the burdens of our world for it transcends hatred, sickness, sin, and division, and even death. This is the invitation to pull our heads out of the sand 
and give witness to the divine truth which transcends all human frailty and suffering. To fulfill the desire for truth by living from within a Christian perspective. To that end, we have our own heroes, the saints. What we see within every saint is not perfection, for the life of every saint includes failure, brokenness, and sin. But what inspires is their struggle to reach beyond themselves, to amend their faults and grasp at holiness. This is what a life of heroic virtue consists of. As Christians were to follow this same path of holiness amidst the diversity of perspectives that shake our world from time to time. The truth about the ostrich is that it doesn't stick its head in the sand to hide. Rather, it builds its nest in the sand. And in acts of tenderness and caring throughout the day of desert heat, the ostrich sticks its head into the nest to turn the eggs so they don't overheat on one side. And so, our childhood myth about the ostrich is shattered. Just so, we should refrain from judging the perspectives of the people around us. Rather, we should be bearers of divine truth and strive to seek the goodness in them. This is the role of the church in bringing about the kingdom of God. Christian communities dotted throughout the world are to be both beacons and ramparts of the truth. And Christ is present with us to lighten our burdens, to give us rest in his love, and to provide the graces we need to reach beyond ourselves. Those graces can be found in the sacraments of the church, particularly in the Holy Eucharist. For it's in this sacrament that our priests perform their most sacred duty in the salvation of souls, to make present for us and for the whole world the incarnation of divine wisdom, the fullness of truth that our hearts so desire. 